Okay, so let's ls into our assembly directory. So ls space underscore out to find our parts. So we are going to annotate the data. So we will use the scaffold.fastA. This is what we are going to use. Okay, so let's continue. So we will need to use Proca to do this. We have already installed Proca. So that's how we are going to do the annotation. So to annotate with Proca, we will say Proca. And by the way, before I proceed, let me say that this is a viral genome. Okay. So with Proca, let's just type Proca first. So for Proca, it allows you to annotate sequences of um, certain organisms. Okay. So we have the organisms here, the groups. Okay. So you can use these options. This one, Archaea, Bacteria, Mitochondria, and viruses. The default is bacteria. So that means that we are going to have to specify that our data is coming from a virus isolate. Okay, so that's what we are going to do next. So let's continue. So let's ls into our assembly directory again. And then let me go over. So we are going to use the scaffold of first A. And so we will call Proca. And then we are going to use Proca to annotate. So we will say Proca. And after that, we will need to specify some options here. So the first one is going to be the kingdom. We are going to use viruses. And then we are also going to indicate CPUs. We will use four. Okay, so with the CPUs, if you have a high-end PC or you're using a Linux cluster, a remote one, you can increase the CPUs here so that the annotation process becomes faster. Okay, now let's add prefix. And we say SRR115283 07 underscore proca. Okay, so what this means is that all the output files that will be generated will have this name. Okay, this is going to be the base name in addition to their respective file extensions. Let's just confirm the ID. Let me just make sure I'm dealing with the, the ID. So I'll just confirm online just to make sure I have the right ID. Okay, so that's it. So, so we have SRR1152837. Let's just check, I think that's what we have. Let me just make sure. So that's, okay, so that's fine. And by the way, you can also use your own name. Okay, so if this name is long, you can choose to use a shorter name, but just make sure that it's a unique name. That's it. Okay, so what will happen is that Proca will create a directory and in that directory, all the output files will be stored. So that directory will also be called by this name or will be given this name. Let me just put it down. Okay, now let's continue. Now let's also add another label, local stack. This one, if you don't add it, Proca will automatically give one for you, but I just thought I would just Add that. So I'll use the same name here. And then let's also specify another thing. So now we are going to specify the first A file that we are going to use as the input. That's this one here. So we will say space out slash scaffolds dot first A. That's what you have. Okay, so this becomes our final output. Okay, so we have Proca, we have the kingdom viruses, CPUs for prefix. We give this local stack, we give this, and then we also indicate this one here. There are other options you can add. Okay, so it depends on what you want at the end of the day, but today I'm just keeping it simple. So you can check the Proca documentation and that will give you more um, info. Okay, so that 
and depending on what you want you can use the appropriate options to annotate your genomes okay so this is just an intro by the way okay perfect so now that we are done let's execute this command to annotate our data okay Proca has completed its work so let's take a look at the outputs so let's do an ls and we are going to find a directory here okay this is the name i give it so let's ls into it we are going to find our files here okay so a detailed explanation of all these files or let me just say a description of each of these files can be found on the Proca page let's take a look at them first So on the Proca GitHub page, uh, just scroll down. There's a section for file outputs. Yeah, that is here. So we have the descriptions here, and you can take a look at them. So we have GFF, GBK, that's GenBank, and all those stuffs. Okay, so we'll just take a, a look at some of them. I repeat. So we are going to take a look at some of them. Okay, so let's go back to our template. We will take a look at the CSV because that can give us a summary. And so because it's a VARA genome, we can quickly look at the entries, okay? Because we are going to get um, a smaller number of annotations. So let's see. Um, so we can do a cut and we specify CSV. And that will give us something like this. Okay. You can also open this using a spreadsheet software. Let me even show you that also. So this is the directory. So you can open it. And then you can open the CSV, which is this one here. Okay. So we have our annotation here. So... This is what we have. So it's a tab separated file. So we have them here. So we have the local stack. We have the CDS, that's the type. So that means all these are CDS. Of course, we are dealing with an RNA virus. We also have the length and we also have the gene. Okay. These are the genes. And we also have uh, some information. And we also have the products. Okay, we have them here. So here we can see the names. And we also see that uh, there are two hypothetical proteins. We see them also here. Hypothetical proteins are those proteins whose sequences have been predicted, but uh, there is no evidence for their function. Okay, that's uh, the simple explanation I can give for that. So this is what we have. Now let's do something else. Since we are, we are working on a Linux system, it would be good to also learn how to explore some of these files on a Linux environment. So I'll issue some few commands that we can use to display this content. So let's get back to the terminal. Of course, we've used the cuts, but then on a Linux system, sometimes you may want to display certain columns. Okay, like we have this data, for example, maybe you want to uh, display this column or you want to display this column or this column or this column it's, it's possible to do that so let's take a look at them first so that's what we are going to we are going to display the products so we have one two three four five six seven we have seven columns so i'll show you two approaches to display them let's start with the first one which is the cat command so the cat command and say cat dash l because it's a tab separated value i can just use the cat command switcher without specifying a delimiter so cat dash f and then i say seven one two three four five six seven so that's the seventh column and i specify the file so this will list everything for us okay this is how we do it you can also use that to search but anyway i'm going to give you a detailed tutorial on how to explore files on a linux system so that's what you need to know 
Okay, perfect. So that's what we have. So the second approach is to use the awk command. Let me show you that one also. With the awk, we say awk awk, and then we will say dash f, and then we will indicate the limiter, which is tab. So we bring our quotes and say slash t. And then space, we bring a quotes, we bring a print, a curly brackets, we open it first and we say print dollar seven. That's a seven column. We close it, we bring a quotes and we specify the file. So this is a TSB file. So let's execute this command. Perfect. So this will also give us that column. Okay, just as we use the cats command to do. Perfect. So that's what we have. So let's continue. Let's ls again into our annotation directory. So we have this first. Okay, you can also explore these ones as well. Okay, so this is the FNA. We have FA. We have FSA, etc. Okay, but anyway, just check my tutorial on Proca and you'll find how to explore these files. Okay, so for this tutorial, I will skip the exploration of all of these files, with the exception of two of them. Perfect. 